Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, I just wanna go over a couple of logistics to get us started. I hope that everyone can please remain on mute until we have some time after I present and my co-host Steve presents. And if you have questions during either of our presentations, please feel free to type them into the chat and Steve and I will address each our, will each address your questions after our individual presentations. And um, I guess I'll take the opportunity to introduce myself and Steve will also introduce himself. I am Jenny Brinker. I probably know many of you on this um, uh, Zoom chat. So it's nice to be here with you in the best center. I teach at uh, Northeast Wisconsin Technical College in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And the program that I lead is energy management technology. So without further ado, I'll get started with um, a quick look at a low level technology, I'll call it an entry level technology called H5P, which is um, a way that you can utilize technology to create and share a virtual tour with um, your class. And to get you started, I'm actually going to paste into the chat a couple of links that you can check out. So as explained, um, one of the links is for a mechanical room in our Great Lakes Energy Education Center on campus. And the other link is for a virtual lighting audit that I was able to create with H5P. And as you are possibly tog toggling between screens here, the Zoom screen and the links that I, I pasted into the chat, I'll let you know again that H5P is a low entry point for creating a 360 degree um, virtual tour. So this is a virtual tour that both of these that I created without much experience in terms of using um, uh, online platforms to create learning modules, nor do I have a lot of experience with photography. So um, I just want to say, hey, you can do this because it's actually pretty simple. And um, as my screen is showing, the technology that you need includes a camera. And if you look at the lighting audit, the second link, that was created simply with my smartphone. I um, created that pretty quickly, considering we needed to catch some students up with a site visit that we did, and they missed, a couple of students missed that. And then um, the other tour, the first link was created with what's called a GoPro Fusion camera. And you'll see that one allows you to grab the screen and um, look up at the ceiling. You can look around the room and there are some navigation um, points that you can insert with this as well. So the platform that was used to create this is called h5p.org. And you can create an account with H5P that gives you access to all kinds of learning modules, um, including creating a virtual tour. Now, the bad part is it's only free for 30 days. And I'll go through some pricing information in just a bit. So to create the virtual tours that you might be checking out, you first need to document the area that you would like to create the tour of. I recommend getting a hold of a camera that can create 360 degree images. I didn't do a whole lot of research for this um, presentation. I'll just simply tell you that the camera I used was called the GoPro Fusion. And according to Amazon, you can get your hands on this camera for about $280. It comes with a tripod that you see on the slide I'm sharing right now. 
And how this works is you would set this up in the space that you'd like to create the 360 degree image. And then with your smartphone, you would have a, an app, the GoPro app, to function as your shutter to snap the picture. So you cannot, you don't end up in the photo, although my foot is in one of the, <laughs> the images um, for the uh, mechanical room. So it allows you to walk out of the space, snap the 360 degree image for later. And then, like I said, if you don't have the time or the funds to invest in a um, GoPro camera, excuse me, you can just use your smartphone. All right, so um, it goes without saying that you need to create an account for this platform. So that's pretty easy, standard thing to do. And then from there, they don't make an appearance. So I just wanted to point out, you go to the examples and download section of the screen. So I have that highlighted. And once you do that, you are presented with a long list of various activities. And I've actually used some other interactive activities that you can embed into your learning management system to create interactive presentations and assessments. So I encourage you to check those out if you're interested in um, this platform. Now, what I'm going to do is just show you how easy it is to create the H5P virtual tour. So again, um, I need to make sure I'm sharing the uh, correct screen. So let me get there. My students like to remind me of that. Jenny, you're talking about something we can't see. I don't know if that happens to you guys. Um, but <laughs> right now, I'm sharing uh, hopefully a browser where I can show you all of these various things that H5P has to offer. And I'm going to simply click the virtual tour. And of course it has some sweet virtual tour for you to check out and it goes through an example. Um, but I would like to just get started in creating one so you can See this along with me. Apparently, I'm looking for the create tool now. Yes. So another thing with teaching online is I'm getting used to juggling small windows around on the screen too. So bear with me here. We'll just hit get started. Okay, I thought I was already logged in for this. So um, with my school email address, it should allow me to bump right in. Our school pays for a, a subscription to H5P. Okay, finally we are to the beginning of creating the virtual tour. And um, you can title this anything you want, of course. And you just start adding scenes. So it's a matter of adding images. All right, so I have, um, I'll just add one image here so you can see the process. You can give this a, a name. So this is the Southwest corner or something like that. So for the mechanical room, you can imagine there's lots of angles that you need to capture. So you'll take multiple images and upload them. So now you can kind of see with the 360 degree image what you're working with. And from here, you can add details. And um, like, for example, if I wanted to 
help students zoom in because they can't manually with H5P, it's limiting in terms of being able to zoom. Students can't really zoom into this boiler that's on the wall. So what I will do is add a picture that I took with my smartphone. So this is um, going to involve not only 360 degree images, but I also took some images with my smartphone. And you can add alternative text in terms of making sure your lesson is up with accommodations. And then once you add your image, you drag it, you simply drag it to where you would like. You can add a description and even hover text if you would like. So when students hover over the top of it, they can read what you put there. Okay, so that's just a really quick example. And of course, we didn't make it all the way around the mechanical room. Now, in order to do that, you need to add an additional scene, okay? So I'll add a new scene. Another picture from the mechanical room. Give it a name, click done. Okay, so now I'm in the center of the mechanical room. So the first image was taken from over here and now I'm able to see from the center of the room. Now, in order for students to get from one corner to the other, you've got to go back to your last scene and add in a navigation point. So go to scene point. So when you add the scene, they're able to get around the room. Okay, now let's see how this shakes out. Looks like we don't need the scene background. Okay, it looks like I'm having little difficulties with this one. Okay, we'll remove this. But the idea is um, to add where you want to go. Okay, now that that was easy. So the navigation button um, took me a little time to insert there. But now that we have that, that means when I hit save, and just show you how this all stitches together. So how long did that take me? I mean, I've got my presentation blunders in here, but I think I put this together within about four or five minutes and check this out. Um, you know, not including the time that took to take the images, which might have been 20 minutes, I was able to create a 360 degree image a place where students can look at details of the boiler system, for example. And I also inserted this navigation point to the second scene. So overall, um, so now I'm on top of this water source unit heat pump. Overall, not a ton of time to create a very interactive presentation that I have used in multiple classes. Um, currently, I'm teaching an HVAC class and we have used this as well as something else that I'd like to show you um, to learn about, you know, for my students to write their lab reports on how our geothermal systems work, 
how the boiler loop fits in, you know, looking at the cabinet heaters and the vestibules. So we're able, even though we're sitting at home, we're able to interact with our building and map out how these systems work. Students take screenshots and um, it works out really well. So that pretty much sums up how to use HPI, but I think um, I'll anticipate some questions that get including, well, how much does the school for this, Jenny? And I uh, pasted the subscription cost here so you can see um, it does get quite pricey if you're looking at an individual cost. It's $57 per month. And I think our school has a 10 author subscription because I know they kind of um, had us sign up early if we were interested. And that is about 109, that is $190 per month. Um, so once you add that up, it is quite pricey, but hey, if you're in a pinch and you need to teach about your building for the next month, you can have a free subscription over 30 days. And as I transition over to Steve, I wanted to show you something that I was just made aware of as of this week. And that is um, our school creating a virtual tour of the whole campus. And as it turns out, they're using a really cool technology that fits right in with this webinar. And it's called uh, Matterport. And I chatted very briefly with Steve about this yesterday. And I think this is a nice transition because um, from what I see of Matterport, it has a lot of potential. And I've actually ended up using it to teach this week about duct work in our building. Um, there is a cost to the Matterport camera itself, the image creator for 360 degree images. Plus there is a subscription cost for using the service. And what does all that get you? Well, I'm trying to show um, the virtual tour. And hopefully you can see this, a virtual tour. I'm gonna go back to my browser here. So you should be seeing a virtual tour of our Great Lakes Energy Education building. So I just clicked on something called the dollhouse view where you can see all of the 360 degree images that were taken by the Matterport camera put together. And you can click inside of any of these laboratories. So we have our, elect our electric power distribution lab and we can take a look around. I can go up on the mezzanine here and Man, and I was excited to see, hey, we can look at all of our solar inverters. My students and I discussed air distribution at length using this. So this was a very cool technology that I thought fit right in with today's presentation. Um, and with that, that's kind of the two platforms I wanted to share and briefly explain, I guess, how I use them in class. We use our building as a living lab and um, I hope to address your questions. So let me make sure that I have the chat open. And as it turns out, it looks like you all are surfing maybe those uh, those links I put in. Thanks, thanks Deb, nice to see you here. Um, Deb says, very cool. But if you have any questions about the technology, feel free to put them in the chat. I can answer them later after Steve's presentation or you guys know how to get a hold of me. Thank you for your time. Steve, on to you. Thank you, Jenny. I'll just take one more quick pause to see if anyone has a, uh, has a question uh, for you before we switch over. It's a great presentation and uh, excited, excited to see the really cool things that you're doing. Thank you, Steve. 
Okay, I don't see anything coming in. But again, if, if something pops into your mind, go ahead and, and ask away. Great, and I'll have some time for questions afterwards. Uh, let me try to share my screen as well. Well, welcome everybody. I am Steve Abercrombie. I am the faculty coordinator for the Sustainable Building Science Technology Program at South Seattle College. And just a little bit about our program. We are a Bachelor of Applied Science program. So we offer a four-year degree to students that come in with a, an associate's or an associate's of science transfer degree. And by and large, our students are working adults. So we have a program design that's geared to, uh, to fit with their schedules. Uh, before COVID, we would meet for four Saturdays per quarter all day, eight to five. And the rest of our instruction was online. Uh, and just a little bit of background, we, we serve a wide range of students. Our student experience coming into the program can range from career switchers with limited background in technical building systems to late apprentice or journey HVAC uh, or electrical or other building trades uh, folks. On to, we have a number of students that may have 15 plus years experience uh, as a technician, a facility engineer, or facility manager. So in a lot of ways, what we were looking for as we went down the path, looking towards uh, virtual and uh, 3D technologies was something that we could use for level setting. Uh, so our requirements that we defined uh, were that we wanted uh, something that was equitably accessible. We wanted a 3D environment that students could access with only a device with internet connectivity. We were hoping to have more, but we really wanted to make sure that a lot of our students are doing this sometimes at work, sometimes during a lunch break, sometimes at home, uh, sometimes on a tablet or a phone. So we wanted something that would work broadly across that and was not limited to a specific uh, setup. We wanted a technology that was very expandable and it was a, a base upon which we could build, particularly looking to immersive virtual environments, something that would allow us to use goggles or use a true 3D virtual environment in the future. Uh, we are uh, setting up a lab where students will be able to come into our classroom space and actually get fully immersed with, uh, with goggles as soon as we return to in-person instruction. We knew it needed to be flexible and easy for technical faculty to update. A uh, long turn time or a long planning cycle is fantastic, but we all know we're often making updates or fixing things uh, just before we have uh, the next week or the next class. And we needed a technology that we could uh, work with in that way. And then we used the Canvas learning management system. So we wanted a technology that was integratable with Canvas learning management, particularly to see if students were engaging to get metrics and also to be able to do assessments in with the technology. Uh, we began looking into these technologies in early 2020 before uh, the pandemic really, uh, really grew in the States. And then we moved to 100% online instruction in mid-March. So that really hastened our search. And uh, the other, one of the other big requirements that we had was trying to understand how we could have students join in energy audits for project-based learning. And post-pandemic, this was really the case because building access has been a challenge. For us, pre-pandemic, it's often a two to two and a half hour journey, depending on where our students live, from where their place of work is to another site. So for full-time working students, we knew in a group project, we needed the ability to have one or two team members that could stream with their other team members based on access and availability. So uh, this led us to three different results. And it's funny, Jenny, that we came to the same finding that you did with H5P. And uh, H5P is, uh, we've implemented for integration with our learning management system and are really, really excited uh, with it. Uh, we found the same thing that H5P is really two different products. One is an open source, open access product that uh, can be used in a variety of platforms. Then it is offered as a software as a service, which was Jenny, what Jenny was showing for integration with the Canvas learning management system. And that's where there's a subscription, you pay the fees, and it's actually able to integrate. And we're currently using that integrated into our learning management. The second solution we found was an augmented uh, reality streaming service. And I'll show that next, which is really that ability for, uh, for folks to 
uh, share as they're getting into buildings um, as we go. And then in addition, we uh, have the 360 video and that's really the, the kind of the jewel in the crown here for what we're doing. And uh, really just uh, fortuitous that working with a group um, that our tech, uh, one of our technical advisors was able to connect us with the California uh, community colleges, energy, uh, construction, and utilities group, and collaboratively, we're able to generate this uh, this awesome resource for 360 video. So now we'll actually get to the fun stuff, and that is a demonstration of uh, what we're doing. So I'm going to uh, start very quickly with uh, with H5P and just echo what uh, what Jenny was uh, was using. Because we did the full 3D uh, in virtual environment shoot in our building, we were able to have those static files and are able to integrate those static files into our learning management system uh, extensively. So here you can see uh, on my screen that what I've got is a, uh, uh, is a typical Canvas learning management uh, page that shows the integration with H5P and uh, how we might uh, create an, uh, an assignment that our students would, uh, would use. And I'm having a little tech difficulty, excuse me, PowerPoint is taking over my screen. So let's see, there we go. So that allows our students here to go into that 3D environment, just like Jenny was showing, and allows both pointers that we can pull up, and sorry on your screens, this may be very small, uh, but it's uh, it's pretty decent on most devices where we can give information or load pictures, but it also allows us to assess uh, live with the students. So in this case, they can get immediate feedback on whether or not they were able to uh, to get that uh, get the content from the pointers. Uh, got it wrong again. So uh, in that case, it will ask them a set of questions. They will go through that assessment and it will give them instant feedback on how they did related to that. And there are ways to actually bring that feedback back through an LTI integration into our learning management system, which has been very valuable. We also know when they're completing the assignments. Uh, so the, uh, the second thing that we have integrated is the streaming application. And so th this is kind of our, uh, um, our solution for bringing student groups into uh, buildings when, we, uh, when they can't be there physically. And uh, right now, in the last quarter, we completed six live energy audits in different buildings with student teams of five to seven students. And in all those buildings, we ran into access issues where we weren't able to bring all the students into the uh, building. So we used different types of streaming technology to be able to, uh, uh, to bring them in. And I will show you a live example of uh, just a 15 second clip of what that looks like and what it provides. In this instance, I'm up in a ladder looking over an acoustic ceiling with a student that is at home on a desktop guiding me on what they want to see. I don't want to say what else is up there, but is there any type of insulation on top of those tiles? Do you know? Uh, no. Okay. So I can't see this way, but can you? Uh, yes. Um, Perfect. So, so that's, a, that's a quick example. This is a situation where I'm actually using a selfie stick up on a ladder. And when I said that I can't see, I'm poking that up above higher than I can see with a, with a selfie stick and a light, uh, the flashlight turned on my camera. So the student's able to actually access something pr very safely, not on a ladder. And that's actually difficult for the operator to see based on technology. The other thing that's, uh, that's really cool about this platform, which is called stream.pro, is that the student uh, driving that, uh, that session is able to take live photos from their desktop. So in this instance, as we went around and did the virtual rock walk around, these are all photos that the student took and was able to manage. So they got those, those photos live they're able to uh, note them and tag them 
And then they were able to share them with their group, which then they took, downloaded into a report and provided on a PowerPoint. And in about a 45 minute tour, uh, the student took all of these photos live. And the photos are a full resolution photo that's taken on the streaming device. So in this case, I used my iPhone with a selfie stick and the student hits the, the capture button and is able to get those live still frames at full resolution from my device. And this has been really, really helpful because it gives the students the control of being there, maintains mm -hmm. the engagement and keeps going. Uh, just checking, was there a question? Go ahead, Steve. Okay, great. So uh, this technology has been very, very helpful to provide students with that access to buildings without having the phys being able to have the physical access, particularly with the challenges that we've run into uh, with facility access uh, in uh, post COVID. Now the third technology and really the, the, uh, the, to me kind of the coolest thing that we've been doing is uh, this technology, which is the, uh, the 3D uh, video. And so I'm gonna hit the refresh button so you can see what the student experience coming into this would look like. And this is, has been uh, an amazing collaboration with the uh, California Community College's uh, Energy Construction and Utilities Group. Uh, what, what ended up occurring in this case is, is we were looking into these technologies and were introduced to, to the opportunity in a group that they have worked with, Fallen Leaf Films. Uh, we, uh, we, we began collaborating with uh, James Morant and Carlos Santamaria, and uh, they were looking for a facility to shoot where they were going to build a set of uh, learning tools and a number of classes um, out, and were having difficulty finding a facility that worked for them in California. Lo and behold, we had a facility that we could get access to the film crew for, and that is our living lab, the building that we teach on uh, on our campus. So we were able to collaborate, get the uh, get Carlos and the film crew up to this building, and had a couple of amazing days. Yes, it, it does. The sun does actually shine once in a while in Seattle, and we had two incredible days in mid July when it did, and we're able to uh, to do this shoot. And the result is this 3D tour. And what this is, is a series of the photos that we were looking at very similar to what, uh, what Jenny was showing, but that have been all stitched together in a platform that is called KR Pano. And that allows uh, pretty seamless navigation on any device. It allows it on the desktop, like we're showing here in a web browser. It go works in a phone, it works in a, uh, on a tablet and actually works that you can spin around and is gyroscopically enabled. So students can kind of get that motion as they're, as they're working. And then it allows us to append information to different, uh, different scenes. So I'll do a quick walkthrough showing you what the building walkthrough would look like. And this is uh, starting here at our, um, at our exterior. Uh, you can see that you can scroll in 3D and the quality is very, uh, it's very, very high quality. Uh, you can navigate using these arrows and in this case, you can see that you can navigate over to our electric vehicle uh, charging infrastructure. We had a student project this quarter where students were looking at doing a, an audit on part of this building. And one of our students was asking about electric vehicle charging uh, infrastructure. So rather than getting a, a lot of additional information, I just sent the, the deep link on this tour and she was able to look up and find the information, pull the information from the tour uh, take screenshots and work with it, which was a really, really powerful and engaging opportunity uh, as we were working on that through the quarter. So I'm going to do a couple of quick navigations here and go into the building itself. And now you can see that we're taking a step inside and we in fact enter uh, the building. And the cool thing about this technology and what really, really excites me is the ability to add content. So here you can see these, uh, this purple dot, and these are what we've, we're referring to as hotspots. And these pretty much like we were seeing in H5P 
allow us to add different content. And here it just says the building entrance uh, and a welcome. But the opportunity that we have is we can add text, we can add video, we can add photos, and we can add deeper links, all with a series of these story cards so that students can engage and get more information on these tour stops. And we can rotate that through topically. We organized this tour for ourselves under a series of the courses that we have. And the, uh, don't know if you can see it and drag it up, but the courses that we taught during our fall quarter were building science, building codes, building components and energy auditing and analysis. And those are color coded with different colors of, uh, um, of icons in the hotspots. It has been noted that one of the thing, one of the opportunities to change is to move from color-based iconography to actual iconography to address folks that might be colorblind or have uh, color differential uh, distinguishing. So you can go in and the students can navigate throughout the entire building. They actually self-direct where they wanna go. And one of the things that we have enabled in this quarter was a scavenger hunt. We gave them a basic building overview where they had to find 10 different tour stops and identify what was there. And that's the view that we're actually looking in here uh, most of the tour stops were elsewhere in the building, but I'm going to walk back to our uh, mechanical room to show you the way uh, we attended that. And it's actually a very good way to make the students go through the entire building and find the different features. So I'm now walking back into our mechanical room. And here you can see that uh, we've got our uh, condensing hot water heater. And if they go back, students need to navigate around and actually find one of the tour stops, which is hidden right here, talking about our domestic hot water heater. So there they, they find the information and the learn more button actually takes them in to a product video on that hot water heater. The other view that I'll show briefly, and then I will uh, wrap up my part of the presentation and open up for questions, is students can also navigate in this tour anywhere using a, a legend or a series of map links. And in fact, they can click down there and then we can go up to our roof. And when we go up to our roof, we have the ability, they have the ability to move around using those same links. The circles themselves take you directly to a different location rather than having to step across. And in this instance, you can see that we have different, uh, uh, again, different hotspots. From the high level view or the drone bird's eye view, you can see that you can see the piece of equipment. This is a, a large box car that we have serving the older half of our building. Um, when we jump into the individual views, we have the ability to then see the equipment that was shot with open panel doors. And so again, pretty cool from a safety perspective, we can, uh, we can pull those panels open without having to worry about de you know, virtually without having to worry about de-energization or any other safety or a number of students uh, surrounding this, uh, this area. So it's a very good way for us to take and then annotate different elements. And you can see that there's only one panel door that's open here. And it's very easy for us to add different hotspots and rotate those as we're going through different classes. So from our building science class to our building components into our building controls class, we can annotate with different information uh, for the different classes. And you can see that we can, uh, we can move here and have additional annotation on our air handling unit supply fan. I'm gonna make one quick jump here and then wrap up. And the quick jump I'm gonna make is to show what the California team has been able to do with a lot of additional content development in this space. And working with the, uh, with the filmmakers, there was a lot of different video that was shot uh, during the day. And uh, that video has allowed them to really annotate this work in, uh, very cool ways. And this is what we are starting to do for our next level of production um, in, uh, in our content and curriculum development. So here you can see the same view of the rooftop unit supply fan and motor. 
And then at that point, they're actually able to pull up a couple of story cards. They have set up so that these story cards will read to the, uh, to the viewer and will uh, we'll do a uh, live audio reading. And then in addition, they have actual video that was shot on the day uh, there and available to to the viewers. So this is a great opportunity for students to again see equipment that might be challenging and are not uh, from uh, safety access and in the energized perspective. And you know it's it's a good way to assess or ask additional questions. Uh, I'm sure several people on the uh, on the call right now are, uh, are 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 shaking a little bit with uh, with with the opportunity to possibly tighten a belt on this rooftop unit. So I'll just pop back over to, uh, to the wrap for, uh, for my presentation and then open it up for, uh, for questions. Uh, I really wanna say thanks to uh, Fallen Leaf Films and the California Community College's ECU sector. We couldn't have done this work without this collaboration and bringing the team there. And it's been really great working with them. Um, we've been iteratively working and uh, in some ways, while we've had different approaches to the end use of this product, uh, in many ways, we're, we're seeing it almost as a common open educational resource where each of us are iterating and the, the team that's developing this from Fallen Leaf is using the best suggestions from both teams to move it forward. Uh, just really also want to say thanks to Brad Hurt, who's uh, from Workforce Incubator. He was the uh, technical advisory board member that's working with both groups and made this possible. And Carlos Santa Maria, uh, who was there at the shoot and was really doing a lot of this work uh, on the ECU side. Uh, some of this work has also been supported by an NSF uh, ATE grant. Uh, and just want to want to make that uh, that call out. Uh, the couple of last slides I've got are just, what did it look like? What was the day like to get all of these, this, uh, uh, this uh, footage captured? And in this instance, the team brought in a very high quality camera to get these, uh, these sh uh, shots inside and outside the space. And you can see a couple of, uh, of um, examples here of what that quality camera looks like. As I've been doing our research and talking with others that are doing this kind of production, it sounds like the entry point's about $250 for a 3D or 360 video camera. And the sweet spot happens from about 500 to $1,000. So you can get a pretty nice piece of equipment that can capture this in, uh, these, uh, uh, these scenes. The art for a full 3D tour comes to bringing it onto an individual platform and doing the level setting and connectivity so everything works seamlessly. And that's really the that production is not insignificant uh, from from a perspective of what's accessible by a, a normal faculty team. And then here you also see on the right uh, where they are actually taking the the high quality video and still footage of the uh, of the unit that we're going to be able to use later. And I think that they're actively using, as you saw in that example. And then in addition, in this case, we actually uh, they the team actually brought a drone in and was doing some drone footage for hard to reach areas and for some uh, 3D motion video. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited to see as more of that gets incorporated into the views. Uh, also just wanna make the call out that uh, James Morant is here on, uh, on the call, I believe. And so uh, any hard questions about what's happening in California, I'm gonna refer to, to him. I'm really happy to talk, talk to what, uh, what I'm doing here um, at South Seattle with this work. Hey, thank you, Steve. I've got a question. Did those students have FAA clearance to fly those drones inside the building? So uh, it's an interesting question. Uh, <laughs> as far as so, I I can say we are right near uh, Boeing Field or King County Field, so the, the the second largest airport in our in our area, and the uh, the appropriate uh, permissions were. Uh, were achieved, but to be inside a building, we did were not required to have the uh, uh, the, the clearance, uh, and we we got the uh, the permissions internally for all of this work. The the one nice thing for us was on a normal day we would have had a hundred folks in and out of that building. Due to uh, COVID, the building was largely unoccupied, so we had kind of unfettered access 
with a lot less safety concerns for you know the, the one silver lining we ended up with. Well, thanks for both of those great presentations. I want to open up the floor for questions. Um, you, you know, you can just say it over the microphone. You don't need to type it in the chat, but you're welcome to do that as well. Um, why don't we uh, start with the question I submitted in the chat, right? How do you two plan to use this technology after we resume some kind of normalcy and return to in-person classes? And Jenny, I don't know if you want to go first. Sure. Um, have some time to think about it since it's been hanging out there. I think that um, after I looked at what Matterport could do, I'm actually checking on my accessibility to maybe create a copy of that um, 360 degree tour of our building and have my students label, instead of creating a lab report like we did um, my first time te teaching this HVAC class, instead of my students writing out how the water source units worked and the dedicated outdoor air supply system and how that all ties together, um, instead of creating lab reports, I think it would be nice if my students could actually go in and create those tags that Steve and I were both showing instead of um, writing a lab report. They could actually do it as a tour. And um, hopefully it would be something that could, they could even take as a link with them to you know, the job interview to, to show their understanding of how the systems work. Yeah, that's an awesome resume addition, no doubt, no doubt. How about you, Steve? Well, it's it's it, it's great to see Jenny. Jenny and I have not collaborated, but we're 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 ending up on the same wavelength with so much of this. Uh, so likewise, it, a, um, after we get back to normal for us, a lot of our education is online. So this really offers an opportunity to. Uh, to provide a base level setting for our students that don't have as much experience in buildings or across the uh, uh, or outside of a particular trade to gain knowledge. So we're going to use this as a series of assignments or uh, supporting scaffolding for our students. Um, for you know, our 15 year experienced facility engineers, they're not, you know, this, they're not going to be using this, but our folks that are career switchers or that are pretty early in their learning journey are going to be able to have access to uh, inside a building at night at their call. So we're going to incorporate this into our curriculum. The other thing we're going to continue to do is grow the opportunity to use this as a virtual environment. So what we're looking at is uh, the uh, the chance to use virtual reality goggles and then start to do overlays uh, to look beyond what you can see in the walls, do overlays with things like uh, virtual simulations for daylighting and lighting and uh, computational fluid dynamics so that students can experience things on the desktop or in 3D that is just not possible in uh, in physical space. And so that's how we're looking on building on uh, a 3D environment to teach things that are that are otherwise difficult and and drive engagement. I mean, the thing we're constantly finding is, uh, with all the distractions and limits to attention, we have to compete. Uh, you know, and so being able to offer this um, an engaging 3D environment, either on the desktop or using goggles, is means that students are going to, after a long day, come home and be excited about their learning again. So that's how we're planning on uh, on using this for a lot of our students. Thank you. It looks like Ted asked the question for me. Um, my presentation suggested it was not so difficult or time consuming. And that seems to contradict with Steve's. I think it, you know, you can take this where you want to. I um, simply started with the need to have a, a virtual reality tour of our mechanical room. So that involved three 360 degree images and maybe 15 or so still images. Um, so that was one room 
with pretty simple idea in mind, just to have the students be able to navigate for conversation, take screenshots on their own. But once you start to look at a whole building or integrating assessments like um, Steve has done, I think that's where you're going to get into weeks of work rather than maybe, I think it took me a couple of hours max to create that, um, the, both of those tours that I shared from H5P. So what about the video with that? You, do you actually just walk through the room or you have to stand one space for a little while and start and go another spot? How does that work? I just created the tour with still images, Ted. So that involves setting up the GoPro on the tripod, walking out of the room and then snapping the picture using my smartphone because it was a shutter through the app. Um, so it wasn't like I had to walk through and create a video, although H5P, if you check it out, um, you can do the demo, you, you can insert rather than just still images, a video like maybe of that blower, you know, the belt driven fan, you know, we could create a video and put that in there or like the energy recovery wheel would be pretty cool to show as a video as well. But once I could take that video with my phone and simply insert it into the 360 degree scene image. And um, that would go pretty quickly as well. So they're just photographs then, okay. I was thinking yeah. somehow it was video that you're actually capturing and um, using that, so. Snap, snap, yeah. move, that's right. <laughs> Huh. They, Interesting. They, they basically look like, you know, for, for those of us that remember the old 3D glasses, they basically are a set of photographs that are a little bit of offset and when, when you see them. So uh, they're, uh, they're just a 2D file. They're big. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't know. They, they tend to be in the uh, multi megabyte range, depending on the resolution of the, of the camera, but uh, they're, uh, yeah, they, they are just stills as you load them at the basic level into H5P. Hey, Jenna, are you going to take us, when we um, conclude this session, you're going to take us away with some trombone shorty there or what? I see the trombone in your background. Sorry, I, I don't know how to play them as well as I used to, but yeah, this that's for the kids. There's all kinds of weird stuff in this room that I, is now my office. <laughs> but hey, I was as you were uh, joking around, I um, was typing into the chat and I didn't hit enter yet. I heard Deb has some really cool things happening with her lab in making it into uh, be virtually accessible as well. So I don't know, Deb, if you wanted to take a minute to share. Sure. Um, we actually hired uh, Oberon Technologies to uh, create a 3D virtual tour of our lab. And also uh, they have a, a couple other projects. One's a virtual uh, reality, so with the goggles, and we're going to take that out to different outreach. Uh, of course, after the, you know, the vaccine and whatever the post pandemic times when we, you know, we get back into our K through 12 STEM outreach. Uh, and, and have like the kids put the goggles on and then experience our uh, energy management controls technology lab virtually. And, you know, we're hoping to attract kids that way to our program. And then also uh, another project that Oberon Technologies uh, has done for us is embedded uh, video. So very similar to what you've got, uh, equipment videos embedded into our 360 tool, virtual tour of our lab. So our own students can you know, walk up to different, or I guess fly up to different pieces of equipment in our lab and click on the equipment and, and then a, a equipment video will come up. So these are just some of the projects, but it's very different. We actually, you know, with our NSF funds, use that to, to hire Oberon Technologies to do this work for us. It's a little different. Thanks, Deb. Uh, and I'll, I'll, Sorry. I'll kind of piggyback on that is that our findings as we did our research on this are that there's still a huge, a dizzying array of 
providers and platforms. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of standardization, particularly in the, in the educational space. So I think that you know, our finding was if you, if you can find a platform and a provider, the, the provider does the video and capture work, that work is pretty portable and relatively standard, but the platform in which you host the 3D tour, whether we're talking about Matterport, I don't know, uh, Deb, if that's, um, if Oberon has their own technology or if it's, uh, if it's something else we're using, uh, the, relying upon this KR Pano platform, that selection ultimately determines how you're going to interact and how persistent it is. One of our, uh, uh, close uh, programs that we work with in Seattle was working with a startup and their platform didn't continue. So they invested a considerable amount of time and effort into a platform that was a software as a service that uh, wasn't a going concern. So understanding where you are hosting your, your tour and engine is really, really critical because that determines a lot of the, the long-term uh, access and support for you. Yeah, they've basically just provided us with um, standalone files that and you know we we also have a real beefed up uh, like a gaming laptop that you know when we take out to stem outreach you know with the you know the VR whatever goggles um, it'll work with that but then also these files we can um, share in our canvas courses so but yeah, they're standalone files. They're just, you're right, they're big. They are big files, but they're not dependent upon Oberon, which is a, a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, Deb, I, I think you're definitely, um, you know, um, raising the bar in terms of marketing for our programs, right? I, I'm almost ashamed to say, you know, brochures and handouts probably don't mean a whole lot anymore. But at, at any rate, I, I really look forward to seeing it used as um, part of general outreach going forward. Um, well, we're drawing close to our uh, 11 o'clock witching hour. I mean, we can stay on for a little while longer if, if anyone's interested in continuing the conversation. I definitely wanted to remind everybody that um, on January 6th and 7th, Best Center is going to be hosting its first online institute, all right? And the format will be different. <clears throat> it is going to be a little less of a faculty workshop and more of uh, a conference. But again, we'll be partnering up with the Berkeley National Lab and you'll be hearing from um, the research scientists about the latest in commercial energy assessment tools. And of course, hearing from uh, best faculty and some of uh, their efforts too. Uh, Ted, uh, Deb, and Robert Nirenberg are going to be uh, among the presenters, right? And would each of you like to just say, um, you know, a, a summary of your planned presentation? We start with Ted. Yeah, um, I'm going to go through what I've been doing with uh, COVID and trying to reach students better. Um, a, a method where I use my library for putting things like data loggers, um, transformers, um, controllers into the library. They have to check them out of the library and use them for um, exercises and labs at home go through things and I put together videos showing them how I do how to do their lab so they can actually use the video to help them through the lab along with a um, kind of like a lesson plan sheet or, or some type of sheet that tells them how, how to do it and that's all online they can just download it from Google Docs to grab that and take a look at things. Um, I'm just building that library out right now and I think at some point I may get some pushback from the library to say I can't have that much equipment, they can't store that much, but um, right now they're still accepting of it and doing a great job. And so that's what I'm gonna talk about. And Deb, how about you? I'm gonna be looking at uh, how to continue to diversify our building automation systems, technology industry and uh, our participants and how can we attract more students from uh, you know, just different backgrounds, different genders, 
across the board and then also uh, bringing in our BAS Tech Barbie and her smart Barbie Grand Hotel as one example of how you could get creative in your uh, STEM K through 12 outreach and just try to uh, diversify your own student body within your program. Right, even Barbie has to move into the 21st century. Excellent. And um, Robert Nirenberg, if you will, sir. Absolutely. So my presentation is actually kind of related to what Steve and Jenny have presented here um, in that it's a virtual environment, um, kind of a choose your own adventure troubleshooting um, in a virtual world. Um, again, just like Jenny though, we're focusing on creating it with just the kind of tools you've got in your lab. Um, and we're looking at uh, how to guide a student through troubleshooting a VAV box while allowing them complete free reign, whether they want to check inputs or they want to check outputs, want to use their meter, things like that. All right, very good. Well, thanks to everybody. Um, I mean, if there's interest, as I said, in staying on for a few more minutes uh, to um, field a few questions, um, glad to do that. I, I know I've got a couple of other questions for, well, everybody present here, you know. Um, I mean, to me, it seems like the 360 technology would uh, play very nicely into campus as living labs or buildings period as living labs, right? <clears throat> I'm just kind of wondering what's the potential here for us to start developing a library <clears throat> of these building tours, all right? I can see that, yeah, I mean, it, it just would be so useful for architecture, engineering, you know, building performance students, you name it. So kind of open it up to anybody. Yeah, hey, Larry, I was thinking kind of in that realm too, but more of a, basic step of just from this presentation alone, I'm sure there's other people on the call that have used different technologies. And so maybe we can start like a, a, a Google doc that people who are willing to share their links and what they've spent or yeah. how they've done some things, you know, just some quick things that everybody can have access to. That would be really good. And I'll, I'll start that off. I'll get one set up and, um, you know, I'll throw some of Steve's and, um, Jen's links on there right away, and then other people can add to it. Maybe Robert, Robert put some stuff up, throw his stuff up there too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll just give everybody access to it. We can just use it as a, a point for people to throw things on. Right, right. And um, everybody remember, you can download this chat uh, to save these links as well today. Right, how, how about um, other people's thoughts around Living Lab? I love to show my students around other mechanical rooms. The more experience they can get with walkthroughs, the better. So I'm looking forward to, to using that one that Robert shared today. I think I'll pull that up for my class later on today. Definitely. All right. Well, I uh, don't see any other questions. Um, from anyone else. Um, but um, at any rate, um, you know, we will have opportunities for breakout discussions at the Institute. And we have not yet, um, you know, um, locked down any possible topics there. So if any of you have suggestions about things that you would love to discuss, please send them our way. Um, you know, I could easily see us doing a session on, again, remote learning strategies, right, where, again, you know, we might integrate today's uh, topic into that discussion. Right. Well, thank you to Jenny and Steve so kindly for your hard work and uh, your generosity and um, sharing your efforts with us today. Um, and uh, I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to do a round of introductions, uh, but hopefully for those of you who are new to Best Center, 
uh, you'll get to know us better as you continue to stick with us. And, and my name is Larry Chang. I'm a Best Center Manager. Ted is uh, one of our co-PIs. And um, Melissa West is our coordinator. And, uh, you know, we uh, rely on uh, our faculty friends to, uh, you know, keep our efforts together and strong and, you know, move forward as, um, you know, we continue to go through these challenging times. So thanks to everybody out there for your hard work. Ted or Jenny, Steve, anything else you'd like to add before we sign off? Good to see everybody on the call, I'll tell you that. Right. Stay healthy, my friends. Yes, absolutely. We look forward to seeing everybody um, at the Institute. And yeah, registration uh, is at no cost. Um, so feel free to share that information with fellow faculty, you know, your, your colleagues, industry, you name it. Students. Yes, students. Absolutely, students. Yes, there are definitely talks that they would get something out of. All right. Very good. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Happy holidays. And we'll see you in January. Thank you so much Thanks, for hosting. Larry.